Hello, my YouTube fam. Welcome back to my channel. Cassandra here, and I'm filming in natural daylight, which is awesome. If you're new, I post videos all on beauty and lifestyle, just for anything that tickles my fancy. A lot of skincare these days, and yeah, if that interests you, don't forget to click the subscription button and a notification bell to be up to date on everything that I post. So, currently, I look a hot mess because I'm about to get ready for work, and I have a confession. So. One of my guilty pleasures is be in the shade room, looking at the comments, like on all the celebrity drama. I love it. I've always been that person that was really into pop culture. It's just who I am. I don't feel bad about it. <clears throat> you know, I read a lot of books. I consider myself a very smart person, but every smart person likes to have a guilty pleasure, and that's just it. That's just one of mine. So. I figured I'll come up with a series of talking about what is going on in pop culture and this is pretty much like the tickle my fancy kind of version of my videos and I think I'm gonna call this series like chat boat so in Jamaica like we have a saying that says like way I chat boat which basically means what are you talking about and today I feel like I'm just gonna call my series of get ready with me chat boat where we're gonna just chat boat bunch of stuff that's just going on in the media and going on in pop culture and y'all gonna see me get ready so that's just it so I look a hot mess I decided to be free let my hair breathe for like a week or so until I get it back to it's been breaking a little bit so I'm trying to get it back to health um, good health which is funny because one of the things that I actually need to do a video on is the Olaplex this stuff is expensive but it's amazing for your hair. So if you suffer from breakage or you have a lot of split ends, whether you're a natural curly girl or your hair is relaxed or you're just like wavy texture girl, this stuff is amazing. You should check it out. And this is not a promotion. I had to buy that stuff for myself. So anyways, let's get into it. So let's come up a little bit closer in my face. I have nothing on my face except my skincare. And I'm going to put my favorite SPF on. I've talked about this a lot. And it's the Surprise. Sunprise. Sunprise SPF 50. Plus, plus, plus. And I love this SPF because it leaves almost like a matte finish on my face. And if you're an oily girl, that's just what you need, really, to just get your, like, skin nice and matte. And you also get your coverage try to get in my ears um i usually put sunscreen on my neck anyways but when i put stuff on my face i get in my ears underneath my chin my little fat double chin on my neck everywhere so let's get to it okay so what are we going to talk about one of the things i actually really wanted to talk about was this whole fantasia situation so fantasia barino i believe that is her last name you guys may know her from um american idol i just know her as like the girl with the most the girl the woman with the most amazing voice and i feel like every time there's like some Thing epic going on in the black community let's say you have like a black leader that passed away or like just any funeral or anything they always call Fantasia to sing a song because her voice is just that soulful and that amazing so anyway she went on a breakfast club and I'm priming my face with Smashback Smashbacks photo finish primer I usually alternate between Smashbox or my Intimus Free on uh, no sebum sebum no sebum primer either one is fine today i just feel like using the smashbox because i just feel like it so anyways miss fantasia went on the breakfast club and she basically i guess the i didn't watch the whole series i just saw the clip because some i love to watch the breakfast club but some interviews i just i just don't have the time to watch and i actually said i was going to watch the full interview about her but i watched this segment where she was talking about how women um specifically black women because i feel like if you go on the, the breakfast club and you're going to talk about a, a topic like that you're going to be talking about black women so she was gonna she was she said that black women cannot find a man because they're too busy being the man and this is going to be my unpopular opinion and in a in a sense i kind of first of all I think what is wrong with her sentence and how she phrased it was that 
there was something wrong with not having a man which to me if you're not in a relationship and you're single there's nothing wrong with that it just it is what it is that's just that's just life because there's a lot of trash ass people out there and you don't want to find yourself in a relationship with a trash <clears throat> with a trash ass person okay so her statement was women are too busy uh, being a man, that's why they can't find a man. And at the end of the day, like women are supposed to submit to their husbands. And whenever you are in a relationship, sometimes you just got to sit back and just be submissive and just let the man lead the family. Now, there's some statements in that I did agree with her, but how she said it just kind of came off a little bit crazy. To me, when I think of Fantasia, and I'm, I'm just speaking purely from perspective of what her relationship and dating life is like. I feel like she's the kind of girl that's just so happy to be in a relationship, period, that she will pick anyone. And that's just my personal opinion. Not that she's in a bad relationship, because I do feel like she seems very happy in her current relationship. Um, but she's also the same person that was in a relationship with a married man and had a baby with a man that was married to his wife that was not divorced so you know like i'm not going to take advice from a woman that was in a relationship with a married man that is just not going to be but i do agree with her in some some statements and i feel like she didn't word her statement correctly in how she was saying it and i'm busy talking and not even doing my makeup so anyways i'm going to end with my cover effects power play from foundation i've mentioned this before it's like literally my favorite neutral foundation the color is n90 i actually love this foundation because i feel like it just blends in seamlessly with my skin and it doesn't break me out or anything so i usually go in with this and then i take my uh, my fenty beauty foundation in 410 to like go all over my face so anyways miss fantasia burino and this, the part that I agree with her on with that statement is that sometimes, and I, and I speak for myself, I'm going to speak purely for myself because I've done this before, that when you are a super independent person, it is very hard for you to A, submit to anyone, period, and B, be in a relationship and just let a man take the lead. And I personally refuse to submit to anyone that I don't feel is worth me submitting to. That's just my personal take on it. I don't care what you want to say. There are verses in the Bible that says that a, a woman should submit to her husband. If that's what you want to go after, you know, fine. But I think the bigger question is, what kind of man are you submitting to? And that is why I feel like she didn't really correct her, like, statement even though she and her husband did go on did do like a little live or some kind of video explaining what she meant i also feel like a lot of times a lot of women especially women that are very independent have their own stuff together it's very hard for you to submit to a man that's not worthy of you submitting to. You can't be a woman that's making a certain amount of money, you got your whole life together, and then you're going to start dating. And a lot of women do this, a lot of black women do this. They always date down. And this also has a lot to do with the whole hypergamy like movement that's going on. You know, we tend to date down a lot because by percentage wise, if you want to do a study overall in the entire United States, black women tend to make all earn black men and they tend to be more successful than black men. It's just true tea. It's facts. You can look it up. The studies are there. Even though we do get paid less than men in 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 general, like we, black women do make a lot less than black men in terms of dollar per like if you if you and a man go out to get a job from a company and you guys are applying for the same job chances are they're going to pay the black man or they're going to pay the man in general regardless of race they're going to pay the man more than they would pay you i've experienced this before i've had jobs where me and my coworkers are doing the same exact job sometimes i'm putting in 10 times more work and they're making more money than I am. That's just how effed up in this patriarchal society and not just America, just everywhere in period. So 
the thing is, it's kind of hard for a woman to, back to my point, it's kind of hard for a woman to submit to a man that isn't worthy of her being submitted. And it's kind of hard for a woman to submit to a man that's not worthy of her submission. That's just what I'm trying to say. You know, so I think that she should have probably clarified her statement a little bit. Now I'm going to go under my eyes with the Sephora Collection Bright Future Color Corrector. I love this stuff. It's actually on sale right now for $4, so stock up, stock up. And it's just the perfect color corrector for me to use under my eyes. So like I was saying, it's kind of hard for you to submit to a man that isn't worthy of you submitting to, period. Like... Who wants to submit to somebody that A, can't lead his family, B, let me go up a little closer, A, can't lead his family, B, doesn't know anything about stocks, bonds, finances, it just don't make no sense and that's just how I feel. However, I feel like if you are in a relationship and you feel like you cannot trust your husband to lead his family into the right direction then you're probably with the wrong person that's just how I feel and I agree with her that a woman should submit to her husband but I also feel like a man should also submit to his wife that's just how I see it and you guys should not be like one partner should make a drastic decision that's gonna completely change the lives of his entire family or like a man should make a decision without consulting his wife first that's just how i feel and a woman should make a drastic decision that's going to affect the entire family without consulting her husband first it's like you going out to buy a you and your husband live together and you decide oh you know what i'm going to wake up and go buy a car and not tell your husband that you're going to buy a car likewise if a man does that like oh i'm gonna we're gonna move to north carolina and he doesn't like consult with you or you guys don't talk about it, talk about how you guys are going to fund yourself, whatever, whatever. It's just, it doesn't work. Like, I feel like any decision that's going to drastically affect the family needs to be consulted by both parties. That's just what it is. And that's just it. If you are, and I also feel like when I say a woman should submit to her husband, like, if your man is better at finances that you are, then let him take the finances over. Doesn't mean that you are completely in the blind or you just like completely don't look at all the taxes and, and see where the money's going. It just means that your husband's better at finances than you are, then you just let him take over. Likewise, if you are the better person at finances, then you take over the family finances. That's just it. So that's just my take on that whole situation. I could probably go a little bit deeper in this whole hypergamy movement and go a little bit deeper in this whole topic, but I think I'm gonna save that for another, another video because, you know, this stuff goes deep and there's also a, a part in the video where she was saying, you know, like, women, uh, it, this stuff is deep because women have been conditioned for years and years to just be the man of the relationship that, like, when a man comes along, you just don't know how to, like, let him be a man. And I feel like a lot of the times we, as women, tend to just not let a man be a man. And let me come back out. And I feel like you have to let a man just be a man and not emasculate a man period you know that's just that's just how i feel my opinion is maybe unpopular probably gonna get a lot of feminists like come after me but it is what it is i don't care um so that's it for that topic on to another topic i'm just going back over with some more foundation on my face another topic that i found very interesting and very hilarious was miss nicole murphy um miss nicole murphy was eddie murphy's is ex eddie murphy's ex-wife and she was caught in a scandal she was caught in a scandal you know kissing a married man i don't understand what is up with these women and married men like stay away from people's husbands like stay away from people's husbands regardless of what a man tell you if you know a man is married just stay away from him you know he could be saying oh me and my wife are separating me and my wife are divorcing we're divorcing if you don't see that divorce paper or that separation paper do not take him at his word because men 
out here, and these men out here, especially in New York City, they're all liars. Like, they will tell you one thing, have you believe in one thing, when in reality, it's a completely different thing. But anyways, I think my foundation looks pretty good. It looks pretty natural. I tend not to go very like full coverage with my foundation because I like to show a little bit of my skin. That's just how I am when it comes to my foundation. I like a little bit of skin showing. So I think I like it just like this. Now I'm just gonna conceal under my eyes. For my concealer, I'm gonna go in with Max NC45. I just have a sample of it. Their um, Pro Longwear Concealer. Under my eyes, I usually just take a little bit of it and go under my eyes because I don't usually like to use a brush because I just don't like to use a brush and that's just it and that's just it I am a beauty blender kind of person with everything except for eyeshadows and maybe if they made a beauty blender for eyeshadows they'll probably be using that too so anyways, Miss Nicole Murphy decided to go on Wendy Williams' show. I don't know what made her think that it was okay to go on Wendy Williams' show talking about, like, the situation that happened. She was caught out in Italy kissing a married man. It looked, honestly, from the pictures, I'm probably going to post the pictures somewhere up in this video. It almost looked like they just had sex. They were just going out for coffee, chilling by the pool. It looked kind of crazy. And the whole time when she was on Wendy Williams, which I don't know why she chose to went there, go on Wendy Williams, because even when she first came out, Wendy Williams was like, this is a safe place, this is a safe place. And she, through the whole video, just like kept asking her questions about the whole situation. And Wendy Williams was one of those, um, is one of those women, she's currently going through a divorce because her husband, her trash ass husband, decided to go have a baby with another woman, which I don't understand some of these men, like, you are married, why are you out there, you know, even if you cheat on your wife, not saying that cheating is okay, because I don't agree with that, period. But even if you do decide to do that, because you're still trash if you do it, you know, even if you decide to cheat on your husband or your wife, whatever you know you cheat on your husband or your wife why get the person pregnant or why get pregnant like it just shows how reckless and just reckless you are you know it means that a you're not using a condom and b you're just raw dogging everybody out there that's just crazy so anyways miss nicole murphy decided to go on wendy williams and wendy had her foot on her, her neck and i thought it was so funny because the whole time she was trying to dodge the question she almost seemed like she was annoyed at answering like some of the questions and it was just funny this whole get ready ready with me videos they're a lot harder than i thought they would be i'm trying to figure out which brow pencil to use because it's like trying to talk about hot topics and then do my makeup at the same time it's a little bit hard to multitask that way so I'm going in with stud brow pencil from Mac um, one of my favorite brow pencils because I love how deep the color is and my eyebrows just need to be a little bit more deeper so yeah she was really trying to dodge all the questions like sis you were out here rubbing up and kissing on a married man and even if you don't know the woman, because I do feel like women who cheat with married men, ultimately you don't owe the woman anything. If anything, the married man should be the one that, you know, owes his wife an apology and shouldn't be doing this. Because at the end of the day, we all know men lie. Not all of them, but, you know, enough of them do. And they will tell you a story and sell you a dream that make you believe everything that they say. And I've been sold a couple dreams in my lifetime in dating um, some of these guys out here. But, you know, like, you can't tell me she didn't know A, that he was married, and B, that he was not divorced. Even if he did say that he was getting a divorce, I do feel like anytime a man tell you he's getting a divorce, unless you see that divorce decree for yourself, or you see those separation papers for yourself, do not take him at his word. I don't care. That's just, you just don't. Don't take him at his word. And I'm speaking to all the young girls out there because I've been caught up in some crazy 
um, relationship situation where I thought I was the only one and I wasn't. And those are for another video. The, the, those three times I'm going to tell y'all in another video. But, you know, when you, there, there's nothing worse than thinking you're the only one and then come to find out, like, this dude is really trying to play you. So, yeah. And she was just very unapologetic about the whole situation, blaming social media, blaming everybody, but taking responsibility for yourself. Like, you are 50. And I have to say, Nicole Murphy is the most beautiful. She's very beautiful, but she comes off as a type of beautiful that feel like because she's beautiful and she's pretty, she she's almost like an alpha female in a sense where because she's beautiful and because she's pretty, she feel like she's entitled to anybody. And at the end of the day, you are not entitled to another woman's husband. That's just how I feel. Y'all can agree with me if you want. I'm sure a majority of you guys would agree with me. But nobody's entitled to another woman's husband. That's just how I feel. But she was just, she came off very rude. Just very, like, not forgiven. And I guess she just went on there because she was trying to, like, clear up her image. Because her image has been tarn tarnished a little bit by this whole situation. She's trying to sell her little workout kit, you know, her little body kits and her face programs and everything. So she was just trying to clear up her, in, in her image. But that whole interview was just laughable. I don't know who her PR representative is, who told her to do this, but it was just, just bad. I don't know who told her to do that. It, the whole thing was just horrible. And it was just horrible to watch because I'm just like, Wendy's just there looking at her like all shady and she was just trying to like explain herself which i don't know how you explain like what did you do like you accidentally fell and you guys lips got caught together like it's just like how do you accidentally like i don't know anyways if i was her i would have just stole and, I, and and that's another thing too i don't understand why she was trying to protect him like just say like this dude told me that he was getting a divorce or he was separated from his wife and I took him at his word and that's just that like we probably have left that we the people that like to be in everybody's business like myself you know we'll probably leave the whole situation alone but anyways that was it so that's my brows I think I'm gonna leave my brows just like that okay so for my eyes I think I'm gonna go in with my artist couture palette I'm gonna try to keep it as neutral as possible for work even though this palette is not neutral at all. So I think I'm probably going to go in between this palette and my Desi Times Katie um, Dose of Color palette. I love these both. I love the, the neutral colors in this and I also love the browns in this. So I'm going to try to rotate between the two, see what I come up with. And this is just an old BH Cosmetic brush. So I'm going to go in with Frisky, which I find that out of all the shadows, Frisky tend to have the the most fallout, which is sad because it's probably going to be the shadow I'm going to be using the most of. But, yeah. Um. So that was that. I think that's all I have to say on Nicole Murphy. And to anybody that's messing, out, messing around with a married man, stop it. Like, it ain't cool. You know, it's not cool. It is not cool to be the woman that's going to cause another woman's pain. And even though you aren't necessarily directly the one that's causing the pain, your her husband or her man is, you still don't want to be a part of that because I am probably one of the biggest believer in karma. And, you know, I'm not saying I haven't done some crazy shady stuff late um, in my lifetime, but I'm a big believer in karma and I believe that, like, as a woman, you should not be the woman that's going to cause another woman's pain. So if you're in a relationship with a married man or you're missing a road with a man that has like a family or whatever, you should probably stop. I'm just saying. Just stop. It's just not cool at all. So I'm going over my eyes with Frisky, just all over my eyes, in my crease, everywhere. I don't know what I'm going to put exactly on my lid. But I'm going in with Frisky in my inner corner, corners of my eyes and the outer corners of my eyes. What else that was in hot topic lately that I want to talk about? I feel like I wanted to talk about Azalea Bank, but she's just not really worth my time, honestly. Because I, I really do feel like there's something wrong with her. I really do feel like there's something wrong with her. But she went on a total rant 
about Rihanna, which I don't understand how, as a very talented person, a lot of people don't realize that if you are a talented person and you have all this opportunity in the world, it doesn't do you any good to hate on other people. It really doesn't. I feel like as a person, like you kind of block your blessings when you hate on people. And all that energy and that time that you take to like hate on other people and be mad at other people's success could be energy and time that you could put into yourself. And that's just really how I feel on that topic. So I'm not going to go in depth with it. But I really wish she would just like, even though I do feel like there's something mentally wrong with her and that's not an excuse for you to go in on people. But I do feel like as a person, like you do block your own blessings and I'm just using frisky all over my eyes underneath the bottom of my lids. You do block your own blessings when you hate on other people. And that's just true to you. Like, you really do. I really do believe that. I really, truly do believe that. And there have been people in my sperum, because not everybody that's in my circle I consider, like, friends' friends. But there have been people in my circle of, like, and when I say circle, I mean circle of Facebook and everything that have been having a lot of success lately in certain areas that I'm trying to work on. And... I can't be that person that hate on other people because they decided to work harder than me. It just doesn't make sense that way. And I don't think that as a person you should be that person that hates on other people because somebody else works harder than you. That just doesn't make sense. Um, so I know I said I was going to go in with the Artist Couture palette and the Frankation palette. But I think I'm going to go in with the Jackie Anna palette. I feel like I'm having a hard time using this palette a lot because one I'm kind of in a makeup rut where I tend to do the same thing over and over again and I don't know why so I said I'm gonna try to venture out and try a lot of new looks looks when it comes to makeup so I'm gonna go in with Supreme in the inner corner of my eyes even though this is a color that I probably would not use at all but I'm going to play with this color. And I did say I was going to try to keep it neutral because, you know, I want to work and I can't be talking to clients with, like, purple and green, neon green eyeshadows all over my eyes. It just don't work that way. What else I want to talk about? Oh, yes. So I saw the movie Hustler and I was very impressed with JLo's um, scene on the pole. She actually made me feel like I wanted to like take some kind of pole dancing lessons, even though I probably would never do that. But she's 50 and her body is freaking sick. Like, sick. And she is honestly my... Like, between her and Tracy Ellis Ross, like those two and... In terms of like body goals, those two are like body goals. But Jennifer Lopez, oh my god, she had me stretching, like trying to figure out ways to like get my body like in tip top shape. I hate going to the gym. I used to be a naturally skinny person, but I really just used to be, as in used to be skinny. No, I'm like a little bit thick, thick. Not thick, thick, but you know, I'm kind of thickens in certain areas of my body. And she looked so incredibly fit in that video. Like, I was inspired. However, the movie itself was so... I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe the movie. I was not intrigued with the movie at all. I feel like I want to go in with Lituation. I wasn't intrigued with the movie. I feel like the movie and the storyline was kind of lacking. Um, they did say that they made the movie in 29 days. I felt like they probably should have just moved those to like add another 29 days to it and give us a good movie than trying to hurry up and make a movie in 29 days. It just didn't make sense. Um, there wasn't a lot of character development in the movie, I thought, except for like the Asian girl, Constant Woos. I don't know what her name is in the movie. Hers was a little bit more character development, but I felt like there was just a lot of things that were lacking. And it does speak to the fact that um, the movie in general, I feel like, speaks to the fact of the lens that women will go to in order to like support and take care of their families and take care of their um, the people that are around them. And that movie did display that. 
and I have never been one of those women to like look down on strippers or stripper culture because I don't feel like that's like productive. I feel like every woman out there is going to do what they can to help take care of their family and in that movie you could see that that was what the main character was trying to do uh, like spoiler alert there's a part where a famous celebrity came inside of a strip club and i absolutely loved that scene i thought it was just hilarious lizzo was in the movie and lizzo was just funny to me cardi b i didn't understand cardi b's part in the movie because like she literally had like the smallest role ever and they kind of hyped it up and I think they just hyped it up because of her cloud they were trying to use her name to just get the movie out there that's just really what I feel because there was no need for her um there really was no need for her to be in like the movie promos because she really had like the smallest part like Kiki had like the biggest part um the black girl god I don't know I think her name is Kiki Kiki I don't know why I'm having like a brain fart moment but she had like a more, more role, like more, she had more screen time than Cardi B did. So I think they were just using Cardi B for cloud. I honestly do feel like that's what they were trying to do. And Cardi B was a stripper, so I guess they was trying to get like insight into that whole stripper culture. And shout out to all the strippers out there. You guys made it happen. Honestly, I always tell people that if I had the body confidence that a lot of these strippers do, I would probably consider stripping even though I don't think I would actually do it but I feel like to be a stripper you have to have immense amount of body confidence and shout out to all the strippers that have all the confidence in the world to do that I don't ever look down on anybody that is in any form of industry any woman that is in any kind of industry even though I don't think that you know it's right because I don't feel like you should be the type to like use your body in a way to make money. That's just my personal view on it. But I also feel like stripping, it goes both ways. The men are using the woman for a good time. They're trying to get away. They're trying to escape their life. And that's you see all of that in the movie. And the women are using these men for all they can because they're trying to use them. So it, it pretty much is a give and take when you look at the whole situation between stripping stripper culture and men that like to go see strippers that's just it and you know that's all i'm gonna say on the movie i didn't really i didn't really care that much for the movie i feel like the movie could have had a little bit more character development a lot of these women that are strippers do it because they're trying to take care of their family and i feel like a lot of women that are somewhat trying to be like in that like high class society look down on these women but in reality like we're all trying to survive and there's a part of the movie the la i think the last part of the movie that i liked and it's a saying that jennifer lopez said and it said that america is just one big strip club and i thought it was just so like it it's pretty much speak to what the capitalist society is there are people who are throwing the money which are the guys that are coming in the strip clubs that are throwing the money which would be like your bosses your ceos everybody that owns companies and business these are those are the ones that are throwing the money at you and then you being the stripper are the ones that are dancing for the money so she said america is one big strip club like there are people who are throwing the money and then there are people that are dancing for the money and that's pretty much what it is like it that, that was just like i never thought of it that way but i actually kind of respected what she said so this is the eye that's what I'm working with. I'm gonna finish up, put a little liner on, fix my hair, come back on camera because time is running out. So yeah. Hey guys, so this is the final look. I didn't do much to my eyes. I would call it really simple. And the lipstick I'm gonna put on is, what is this called? I can barely see it. Cross Wires by MAC. Oh, I love this color. It's very like corally pinky. I feel like if you had a lighter skin tone, it would look so much nicer. But I, it looked so much brighter, I should say, but I absolutely love this color. And that's the final look. My hair looks crazy because I'm trying to let, give my hair a break from the wigs, you know. Um, put some lip gloss on. 
I'm like literally trying to run out the door. And this is this Becca um, Times Christy Teigen lip gloss. They had it on sale on their website. It's probably still on sale if you guys want to check it out. I got paid like $11 for it. It's a nice gloss. Not what I was, was expecting, but yeah. So this is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm probably gonna try to do a lot more get ready with me videos like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love y'all and see you guys later. Bye guys.